This is really odd. Should I save my game? I wouldn't worry about it. The game was expertly designed to have no dead ends or death. Yet still be scary and have a sense of tension. You can feel safe exploring whatever you want. But playing classic adventure games has taught me to save often. That was true, up until Monkey Island. At least with LucasArts style adventures. Then the designers realized that death and dead ends weren't making the game more enjoyable. It was actually making it less fun. That seems like a sensible approach to adventure game design. It is. It just takes a little longer and requires more thought and planning. But it really pays off in the end. Thimbleweed Park is a point-and-click game that was released in 2017. Willing to create a game that provides the same challenge, fun, and innocence that were appreciated with the adventures of the 1980s and early 1990s, Ron Gilbert decided on November 18, 2014, along with video game animator Gary Winnick, to launch a fundraiser on the crowdfunding platform Kickstarter. He was asking his longtime fans for $375,000 to design something in the spirit of Maniac Mansion, Thimbleweed Park in this case. Some $400,000 were raised in just six days, but in the end it was over $600,000 that were collected. It all starts with a murder on the outskirts of, of a small town called Thimbleweed Park. Two investigators are trying to unmask the killer, meeting a colorful local population. Exploring the city, <laughs> one can meet two sisters disguised as pigeons running a plumbing business, an opportunistic occultist, or a gas station manager who's visibly been taking drugs, to name only a few. They are being joined by Dolores the Programmer, her rich uncle Chuck, and Ransom, who's an old-fashioned clown. Each character travels through several settings, such as an abandoned main street, a luxurious hotel, a mansion, or a cemetery. Throughout the adventure, the player is invited to read multiple choice dialogues, which often fall into absurdity. One can quickly realize that something's going wrong in this town, where strange things randomly happen. There's a cave with an altar, and it seems that everything is controlled by some kind of mysterious superpower. As a player, one has to be more than curious and creative as well to progress in this world. Would you believe us if we told you that we had to freeze a hamster so that it was able to travel in time, then defrost it in the microwave before putting a winter sweater on that was previously shrunk in the dryer? That sounds pretty crazy, but solving this kind of absurd brain teaser is somehow satisfactory. Who needs a hint? Released in March 2017, Thimbleweed Park is based on text commands and the embodiment of multiple heroes. Not a remake, nor a 100% retro game, Thimbleweed Park is sort of a tribute to the 1990s point-and-click games, with highly pixelated characters and a game screen that comprises an overflowing list of objects and verbs to click on. But taking a closer look at the screen, one can notice the difference with actual retro games. Graphics are visually arranged in a more subtle way, for example with a big squares displaying a gradation of brilliant oranges creating a sunset. Small details pertaining to modern games were also added. For instance, you can cross different scenarios with a continuous click, while retro games would have required multiple clicks. But still, Thimbleweed Park manages to recall retro games' philosophy by emphasizing observation and thinking over actions. One can walk in circles for hours from one room to the other, pass by the same sign ten times in a row, and only discover later that all one had to do was to read it to get the key element of the situation. You have to pay attention to everything, overlooking a line of dialogue or skipping a location and I was quickly getting lost. All the necessary information to understand and solve each situation is genuinely hidden, most often right under the player's eyes. Willy enough to torture the player, this game is frighteningly exhilarating if you hold on and manage to overcome all the obstacles alone. Thimbleweed Park is definitely the perfect point-and-click game that one would feel proud and happy to complete without any help. 
The popularity and profitability of retro gaming has exploded in recent years. Nintendo released its virtual console on the Nintendo Wii in 2006, offering a slowly growing library of classic NES and SNES titles such as The Legend of Zelda and Super Mario World. In its initial months, over 10 million titles were purchased on virtual console. In more recent years, the efforts of Microsoft to make their consoles backwards compatible so that hundreds of old titles can be played is demonstrative of the demand for retro gaming. We live in an age where kids who skip school to drop quarters into a Pac-Man machine are, 50 years later, still gaming in their 60s and 70s. Gaming's demographic has slowly shifted as the majority of gamers are now older than 25. Now the implications of lifelong gaming are beginning to be addressed by the industry and indie developers. Celia Pierce found that for gamers over 30, one hook is the power of memory and nostalgia. Returning to or referencing classic games or stories could be a strong attractor. Developers such as Capcom, Rare, or Namco frequently release collections of past games. As David Heinemann illustrates through a collection of message board comments, these collections are often met with disappointment and anger. What the? Anger at omitted games, modified gameplay, or poor porting, all of which deform the wanted experience, if the wanted experience is included at all. Ask a Silent Hill fan about the Silent Hill HD collection and watch them erupt. Many gamers are concerned with their own personal version of gaming history being represented in these collections in form and function and also curation. In many ways, it is similar to how movies are never as good as the book because readers paint their own versions of the narrative and that is the vision that they want to see on the screen. And like many readers can re-read a book for an authentic nostalgic experience, gamers can find old gaming hardware for the authentic tactile experience that they crave. Now that retro gaming is expanding from the niche community into the mainstream, the reselling of old titles in the industry, the constant remastering and remaking of games, as Heinemann posited, can create the sense that gamers' nostalgia is being actively exploited for profit. <sighs> I feel better now. Barry Schwartz defines public or collective memory as collective memory that affects what individuals think about the past, but transcends the individuals. It is a representation of the past embodied in both historical evidence and commemorative symbolism. Bruce Gronbeck expounded, stating that present concerns construct public memory of the past. Gronbeck illustrates that bridges connect not past to present, but the other way around, stating society's collective memory is regularly reshaped by today's interpreters so as to make it more useful in the present. As Pierre Nora said, nostalgia is but one mode of addressing the apprehension of the future. Nostalgia is by no means unique to video games, but the interactivity makes the performance of nostalgia in the video game form quite unique. As Don Draper famously said, nostalgia, it's delicate, but potent. It's a twinge in your heart far more powerful than memory alone. It takes us to a place where we ache to go again. And as Edward Casey said, nostalgia is an emotional response to the recognition of an impossible return. Nostalgia casts the past as inherently better, simpler, but that is paired with the profound loss that is felt when the past cannot be regained. As the saying says, you can't go home again, except with video games, you can. Video games offer a preserved virtual environment, a virtual home. Unlike, say, a film, video games can be re-experienced ludologically. Players can return to a familiar virtual space, but take different paths, perform different actions, and actively construct new experiences, new memories, within this virtual nostalgic space. As David Heinemann expresses, nostalgia is an especially personal and emotional form of memory which accounts for gamers' guttural reactions when their own perceptions of gaming's past is affronted by the industry's version of history. But there will come a time in every gamer's life where they begin to think of the titles they grew up with and say, they just don't make them like they used to. And that's what makes Thimbleweed Park a unique excursion into retro gaming. Both player and creator are co-participating in a nostalgic exercise. Gilbert and Winnick wanted to revisit their own past and make them like they used to. That their crowdfunding goals were met so quickly and then exceeded is demonstrative of the proliferation of Asian gamers who don't merely want to retread old ground, they want to 
tread new ground that feels just like the old ground. Many games, especially in the indie sphere, due to affection and the lower costs, have embraced retro aesthetics to craft new experiences with modern hardware and software to create visually rich and ludologically complex experiences. Thimbleweed Park takes place in 1987. It is filled with copious references to the pop culture of the era. The game is rife with meta-commentary on the game as you play it. The character of Dolores wants to design games for Mucus Phlegm. There is even a hint hotline you can call with the in-game phones, and there's an in-game phone book featuring the names of Kickstarter donors who leave personal answering machine messages for the player. Thimbleweed Park is not merely overflowing with nostalgia for a certain game or a certain type of game, it is overflowing with nostalgia for a bygone era in a way few retro games have achieved. With Thimbleweed Park, not only can you go home again, but the home is entirely new, and yet it is still home.